Today's America's Cup Racing is brought to you from Auckland, New Zealand. On this opening day of racing, the New York Yacht Club and Patriot are first out of the blocks facing Ineos Team UK. But this is a really, really big moment for this whole program and all the effort that's gone into getting this boat competitive. It's definitely the same boat, it's just had quite a few modifications. Ineos Team UK, they couldn't buy a win and the World Series pre-Christmas 2020. Uh, it's been a tough old ride for the team. Ineos Team UK win Prada Cup race one and get the first points on the board. Okay, awesome job guys. Well done guys. Nice work guys. We didn't win that race, I would say, because we didn't do a good job of keeping the race close. This is a struggle getting worse right now for the Americans. Our boat is a great boat and I think our boat's a fast boat. What a way to start this Challenger Series. The fact is, uh, those guys did a better job, and they deserve the win. A couple, couple strange mistakes from Luna Rosa, Prada Pirelli. <laughs> oh, I think clearly the landscape's changed. Ben and these guys have made a big step up. This is far from over yet, so whilst we've won a couple of races, this is just the beginning. We've got a long way, long road ahead of us, and we've got to keep our heads down, keep focused and keep, keep on that journey. No my heart of my welcome to Auckland, New Zealand, home to the 36th America's Cup and day two of the Prada Cup Challenger Series. The opening day of racing yesterday left fans and experts alike slack jawed. The previously underperforming Ineos Team UK docked out and cashed in, confidently winning both of their round robin races and set the Prada Cup alight to the delight of British supporters. Confirmation then that after two races, it's Enios Team UK with the perfect 2 and 0 record, while American Magic and Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli are yet to get on the board. So let's head to the racing. Today's first showdown is between Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli and American Magic. Day two of the Prada Cup is being raced on course C right outside of Auckland Harbour. Boats begin the start process 210 before the start. Little bit of boat on boat compat all the while trying to get the best of the other when the starting gun fires flying around an upwind downwind 1.8 mile racetrack with narrow course boundaries the boats will sail three laps including a downwind finish in this very shifty 8 to 12 knot easterly breeze nice. well done jimmy that was a slightly wrong this is where yesterday we heard plenty going on. Yeah, they're barely staying on their foils right now, and they could get clipped with a starboard tack boat coming across here. American Magic on starboard, and wow, looks like the Italians just get a across, and they're struggling to stay on their foils. There is no penalty on that dial down, and by the way, I agree, I agree. I don't think there was a foul there too, but this is just a panic situation. Get up on the foils on both boats. 49 seconds to race start. And Luna Orusa, Prada Pirelli back up on the fours. That's a strong sign for them. They're up, but no way are the Americans up. The Americans are struggling. So officially race underway. Luna Orusa, Prada Pirelli. Round Robin 1, race number 3, and they are off and racing. American Magic still not on their foils. We knew this could potentially be sailboat racing like we've never seen before, but this just throws an incredible wrench into, into the situation for these teams. Falling off your foil can end the race immediately. It's so high risk, isn't it? And we've seen, when Nathan said pre-start, they were towing around just to stay on the foils. I mean, the Italians are doing double the speed coming off that line of their American opponents. Well, the good news is American Magic is up. 
We've seen Prada pretty slippy in these light winds. They just seem to, to get out of the water, get unstuck. They're just slippier than I think everybody else. Also, running today asymmetric foils. They've got the old foil. You can see it now on the starboard side. And the new foil that we've just seen in this Prada cup uh, on the port side. So keep an eye out for that. Let's see how they get on with it. After we're all done, I forget it. Yeah. Careful on the mine shake. They're not Door being one. shy on the left side of the course right now, Nathan. So, is there enough pressure out there? You know, yesterday we saw the teams battling for the right. Today, uh, they seem not too leery of that left side. No, uh, Kenny, it's, it's, def it's definitely more open today. There are streaks of pressure, and where Luna Rossa have just taken now, they've taken a nice piece of pressure. You know, these guys have got to position their maneuvers in good breeze, but I'm just positioned. The camera boat's right up near the top mark right now. The left turn, if they were to take the left turn, is going to send them into what looks like very light wind. So I expect both boats are going to need to uh, position themselves for a right-hand turn. And just as I say that, I can see American Magic off the foil completely parked right now. Uh, this uh, is getting from bad to worse right now for Dean Barker and his crew. Smooth, Three, two, one, and clear. Nice as one. Luna Rosa, Prada Pirelli around the mark for the first time at the top gate in this third race of Round Robin Series 1. And you just know, if you look at that clock on the bottom right of your screen, that is going to blow out big time. Brings a whole new world into this, into these matches, in this light air. Whole new world. I'm watching their boat speed. It's a critical number here. And uh, 16, 17, 18 knots. It's right on the edge, isn't it? The cast of being able to fly. Luna Rossa took that left turn mark and sailed to what looked like to be less pressure. They are now sailing directly back up wind again because the next line of pressure is actually coming from the other side of the course. So. It looks like they're going to be sitting and waiting for another 20, 30 seconds, but potentially enough breeze to get foiling again soon. But what a, what a race. This is uh, not what we were expecting about 20 minutes ago. Just like a windsurfer, they're, 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 pumping the, they're pumping the mainsail to try to get the thing up in the foils. Hey guys, just quickly from on board here, American Magic are close to taking off at the top marks. There's breeze that has come down the course. If they can get up on the foil, there's a chance of a lead change coming here. As soon as we can join. Anywhere you like. American Magic up and foiling and finally around their mark at the top gates. The gap 7 minutes 38 might mean nothing at the end of this. If they have found the win, Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli are in trouble. I think uh, Luna Rosa just popped out of the water at the same time. So obviously this breeze just came across the, the course. Both boats are now out of the water. We're back to game on. And that, by the way, that, that whatever the time was is absolutely irrelevant at this stage. We're back to a ball game. American Magic closing in on Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli. Look at the dashboard, sitting at just under 28 knots. And okay. Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli sitting around 21. So this has truly turned into game on again, Shirley. <laughs> you, it's so nerve-wracking, isn't it? I mean, no, nothing in it. Seems like the breeze is just not going down this course. It seems like about halfway down the track, it's only about five knots of breeze. So I think we're going to be very stop-start down this run. I think the lead is going to change a bit. You'll get a puff, you'll get up and foiling, and then you'll just sail out of the front of it again and then just stop. You take it all down towards the mark. Yeah, from a pressure perspective, this is the best spot for me. Maybe you can call Luis. Yep, standing by. A little pressure to come. Start doesn't look like enough yet, though. We all know foiling is, is extremely fast, but once you're not foiling, you, you're basically a stationary object. So the decision right now for these teams is do we just drift down at wind speed at four or five knots of boat speed, or do we actually sail across the course 90 degrees, you know, to the wind, making no VMG at all? You know, but if, if you can do that and you can get up on the foil, which it looks like Luna Rossa just have done as I'm speaking here, then all of a sudden you'll be doing 30 knots again. So um, it's all about 
from here for Luna Rossa. If they can make this next jive and keep the boat on the foil and start linking these puffs together, um, the person who can do that all the way to the bottom mark is going to have a pretty commanding lead. Luna Rossa, Prada Pirelli, back up and foiling on the second of a now four leg race, race number three of Round Robin Series 1 to complete the first Round Robin phase. And that will make the fans that are at the America's Cup Village supporting Luna Rossa very happy indeed. The Americans are close, 22 knots. That's that's a good speed. They should be able to pop that, and sure enough, they do. They're out, and they're going to be going 30 knots. This, this, this race is not even close to being over, right, Cheryl? I'm <laughs> not even close. No way. If you're Luna Rossa, what are you going to do in this next leg? Where are you going to go? No, it's all right. It's just light. That's all. We might get here. Turning. Okay. Okay, number one. I'm just a little tight runner. Luna Rossa, yeah, yeah, Prada yeah. Pirelli around the Good bottom point. gate for the first time. The next time also, they hit that ahead. gate, if they are hey, in the lead, line. they will win the race. Right. Another one of these little puff lull situations, and it's we're right back to a big lead change. So, so hold on, folks. This is welcome to the new America's Cup. Touchdown, Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli, still with the lead, but both boats are basically coasting. So Nathan, is there is there any puff coming to either side to either one of these guys? I guess for the Italians, at least they're kind of upwind of uh, of the Americans. So if something comes to the Americans, it's probably coming to them first. Well, Kenny, that's bang on cue right now. Luna Rossa up and foiling. They got that pressure nicely. And as you could hear Bruni just say, their pressure is at North Head. That's exactly where we're sitting. And uh, if they nail this tack, I think this could be uh, a huge advantage for them. Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli now on the homeward leg. And what a different story on board American Magic. The cow makes its presence felt again. Well, that's the cow noise. And they have not been falling for some time and yet to complete the third leg. These guys are going 40 knots in, a, in eight knots of breeze. How do you... How does that happen? Oh. A little soft out of this. Yeah. Luna Rossa, Prada Pirelli about to finish and win race number three of round robin number one. And why wouldn't you be happy after how this race has unfolded with calm conditions? But most importantly, in this Prada Cup Challenger Series, Luna Rossa get their first point on the board and beat American Magic. Let's go on board. Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli and get some reaction. Francesco, congratulations. You pick up your, your, your first point in what was a very challenging race. How challenging? It was very challenging. Uh, we are very, very happy. Uh, it's one of those races that you can win or lose very easily. It um, was really demanding for the boys. It's almost like harder for them in the lighter wind than the stronger wind uh, uh, in the... In, uh, power-wise. Um, so they've done a fantastic job, really. The boat was uh, always uh, with enough power uh, to pump, uh, to take off. So I'm very proud of the team today. Let's now go on board American Magic. Dean Barker on the helm. And Dean, quite simply, that's what you call a tough day at the office. Oh, yeah, it's uh, I call that a lottery, yeah. Um, it was pretty marginal you know you sort of you question the why we want to do that as part of the event but anyway it's uh it is what it is so you know it's going to swing in roundabouts and um yeah obviously didn't go that well for us in that one a great result for luna rosa prada pirelli completely outperforming and dominating american magic in the light winds after the break the british go in search of a third point Yep, it's the two originals, the Royal Yacht Squadron's Ineos Team UK and the New York Yacht Club's American Mansion. Frustrating. That's the best way to describe today's falling conditions. The wind gods have taken the puff out of today's racing. 
how will that affect Enios Team UK? We're about to find out as the Brits go in search of a third point against American Magic. Two minutes and ten seconds will be the time that Enios Team UK will come in on the port entry, American Magic will have starboard entry. The one talking point uh, so far you might consider with American Magic 2 will be, of course, tactics and how they have uh, raced so far in this Prada Cup Challenger series. He's just fallen off the foil. Copy. Stand by, tag here. Copy, crossing. Oh, no, just keep it. No. Steve, incredible Guys, moment here. a huge mistake here. Yeah, huge young mistake, sorry, young Kenny, by American Magic. They early were entry. early... The, you know, early entry, so they've already got a penalty and they're off the foils above the line. That was all their setup. They tacked too early when they went to enter. And, you know, from a minute out there, you could see they were going to have big problems. Dial down going on here right now. This could be another penalty if they can't get on to starboard tack very quickly. Turning up. The American boat given a penalty and then they, no, they just didn't avoid them in any way. But I'm not so, is that a penalty, to, is that a penalty for the uh, not getting into the starting line on time? I think that's what it might have been, Shirley. We'll have to, we'll have to, we'll have to double check that. And let's just go back to the start. We've talked about how important starts can be. Wow, this was important. And American Magic getting pinged for an early entry. Yeah, this is all about setup and how you get into the race course. They're coming in early. Remember, they can't cross that small line, this line right here, until until two minutes. And they're really worried about being too early to cross that line. They try to slow down too much. And surely, as we've seen, you get below that 20-knot barrier or so you're likely going to end up in the water. That's exactly what they couldn't do. That's really the only thing they couldn't do, and they did it, unfortunately. Ineos Team UK approaching the top gate for the first time and have come off their foils. You heard Ben Ainsley say to Giles Scott, it's pretty light up there. Well, it's very light. Yeah, guys, I'm up here at the top mark, and it's about five knots at this top gate. But over on that boundary near North Head, it's about 12 knots. It's um, nervous moments. I can see American Magic. They are aiming at the top marks in this pressure, doing probably 30 knots. And uh, this race is far from over. You could walk faster than any of us at the moment. Imagine looking behind. That is a car coming towards you at, at 40 miles an hour. But are they going to park? They have to go through this. They have to navigate this same light air patch that Ineos is in right now. Ainsley's not even going to look at them. And they do. They park. They park. They were super lucky they made that mark, Shirley. Now at least they get the head in the right direction. Could that be the slowest mark rounding you have ever seen? Oh, but trust me, on the boats I sail, I've gone a lot slower around the mark before. <laughs> I think the boat behind might have the advantage here. They might get the pressure before. You know, I, I, I imagine if American Magic jive any time now, Ineos are going to jive to match. And I reckon in about 30 seconds, there's going to be enough pressure for both boats to be foiling on port jive. There is a good sign. Ineos Team UK, who are 2-0 and so far, getting up and trying to stay up on those foils. See, they came into that boundary, surely. There it is. There's the problem sometimes, right? Oh, they, what a tease. It's a tease. It's a tease. It's a frustration, but it's really all that breeze is down that side of the race course, so they might be running into that wall more often than you think. What a shame. But surely, at the same time, we've never said... Ineos is getting out of the water more easily than another boat in a race before. This is a new, this is new, this is something completely new. Yeah, I think they'll be positive from this. I mean, this is a different looking outfit we saw in the in the light, difficult conditions pre-Christmas. American Magic are up and foiling, picked up a puff. 
They are absolutely ripping, and this race is getting tense. Just as we're saying this, uh, the Brits got up on the foil as well. So they're both going 30 knots in, in about seven knots of wind speed. Unbelievable. It's not a stable fill. It's it's a short burst, and I don't think that's going to be the last time we get a burst and it's followed by another lull. Come on, boys. We really need those trips. Enios Team UK around the bottom gate for the first time. The same shortened race. It was six legs. Now it's four. Oh, there's a pressure boundary here. Uh, Quite a second. And they are now yeah, halfway right. through this the race. Yeah. They okay, have made huge changes on this boat that was working in the light wind just as well as the medium breeze. It's super impressive to watch as a sportsman. Right out of this, right Man, out. I, I just can't understand how they can make that boat go so much better in this wind. And we have a new kind of weak player in the light as of today. It's just too much of a coincidence that American Magic is now struggling against two boats in very similar conditions. When the other boat is finding a way to pop out of the water, they aren't. So, boy, oh boy, I don't, I don't know if they expected to be this weak in this condition. American Magic were showing signs of rounding the bottom gate, but they have just basically touched down again, while at the other end of the course, Enios Team UK are approaching their penultimate gate rounding before heading home on the home run. American Magic get around the bottom gate. They're halfway through the race, but that distance, eight minutes and 47 seconds behind. Enios Team UK crawling to the top mark for the last time, the top gate. And they just, well, you might say, you could say sashay around. <laughs> In the meantime, as you can see in the background, American Magic up on the foils. Imagine if American Magic came from an entire leg down to win to win this race. Got him tacked off his side. Six minutes and 21 seconds, they get up in their foils. But the spectator craft will be a little bit nervous right now. What a magnificent place to be. <laughs> I'm not so sure. I think there's uh, I think there's some nervous folks right there. Three minutes and 40 seconds to go to maximum race time. 45 minutes allowable for a race. Can Enios Team UK get across the finish line before that clock hits zero and make it three from three? Nathan, <laughs> what do you think? Do they make it in time? Well, if they make this jibe, they're going to make it. They're um, getting more confident by the second. And look at that. That's a glamorous jibe. Just holding the foil a little bit soft still. And out nicely. Very nice jibe there. And I think that they are going to make it at about two minutes to spare. What would you know? You know what that says to me? He's going to be scourgeable. Is that smug. the right word? Uh, yeah, yeah <laughs> encouragement, and he was <laughs> smug. How about that? Surely, what a race. Taking it right to the yeah, limit. Lots of questions today about this boat's performance, then. and certainly Ben Ainsley has answered them. Goodness gracious me. Enios Team UK win race one, round robin two of the Prada Cup. Not sure if we made it or not. Yeah, no, I think we did it with two minutes. But let us go on board Enios Team UK and talk once again to Sir Ben Ainsley. Ben, you're three and oh, the smile looks great. How do you feel right now? Oh, that was a pretty tough race, I've got to say, uh, given what, what's at stake. And I actually think it was toughest for the grinders. They work hard all the time, but today they their work was, you know, just that much more intense trying to keep the boat up on the foil and every maneuver you know that if you come off the foil that might be the end of the race so it was a tough one but the guys did a great job handling the boat yeah Giles Giles did a great job trying to find the breeze what little breeze there was we managed to muscle it around and get the win so we'll take it
let's get across to American Magic. I suppose the, the obvious question here is, Terry, what's going wrong and how do you turn it around? Um, what's going on? Well, we're off the foils in both starts, and so, you know, that, that puts us behind straight away. From my perspective, there's nothing to turn around. we got to just stay patient, trust in our team, which we do, and uh, keep chipping along. There's a lot of meat left on this bone, so we're going to keep fighting. So day two comes to an end, and Ineos Team UK stretches its lead to three points. They've got plenty to celebrate, but there's plenty of action to come. Tomorrow is another day. Fingers crossed Mother Nature delivers some more puff, and Father Time puts the AC-75s back on the fast track. Today's America's Cup Racing is brought to you by Prada.